Hello, my name is Eric Swenson. Um, you can follow me on my blog, Twitter, and YouTube. Today we're going to be going over Axure Basics. So uh, Axure is a wireframing and design tool that really is meant for um, interactive prototypes. So this allows you to create very kind of basic uh, designs. It could be you know, pretty low fidelity all the way up to pretty high. But um, Axure is a tool that's been out there for a really long time. Uh, I've been using it for quite a while, really for doing prototypes. Um, there's quite a few other design tools out there like Sketch and Envision that are really meant as uh, sort of design tool uh, for a little bit more high, fi high fidelity. Um, Axure is really meant as a prototyping tool. So um, I'll basically walk you through some of the basics of Axure, um, some of the main application menus, the toolbars, uh, some of the panels. Um, so I'll get right into it. Uh, so Axure itself um, is really a pretty easy tool to work with, uh, pretty easy to, to learn. So uh, here is just an actual page that I built in Axure. It's just images and text. Um, but uh, I'll kind of run you through the main top sections here. So in the top menu here is just your file menu. So I'm on a Mac, so for a, a PC it may be slightly different. Um, under the file, you can create new uh, pages, uh, you can print, which is kind of the basics. Um, start When you get into project, this is where you can have global styles within your project. So you may want to have consistent colors or fonts um, that you can reuse over and over. And as you change those, you can change the different, uh, it'll just apply it across the board. Um, these are specific to the elements that you've selected, so um, based on the page you can arrange them, group them. Um, very similar to if you were to right click, um, you have uh, very similar actions. The publish menu, this is really meant as a, a way to preview the interactivity that you have. It'll open up a default browser or you can um, actually generate and publish them online. So through Axure, there's a uh, service called Axshare, and it's a hosted service through Axure that allows you to publish your work so other people can see it. Um, and um, it's a free service, and so it comes with Axure itself. Um, it's very handy so that, you know, Envision does something that's similar, but this is a way that you can kind of manage all of those um, and give a unique URL to the either your client or whoever you're working with. Team is a section where it um, allows you to work with team members. So each team member has the ability to check out a page, be able to edit it, check it back in. So it's sort of a collaborative area. Um, account, Windows, these are just kind of basic things. So um, the next part is really the toolbar. So um, sort of these tools up here are as you're starting to work with the pages, um, the first one is the selector. So some people, these are sort of preferences. So some people, as they interact with the page, um, you'll see here as I drag and select, anytime it just barely uh, touches an element, um, it's very uh, much like Illustrator, where um, some people prefer that, where I myself, um, if I'm working in Axure, I like to have it so that you have to select the whole container to get that element. Um, this allows you to easily control what you want to select. Sometimes you, um, if there's a very complex things on the page, you just want to select uh, one or two of them, um, and this is an easy way to do that. Uh, connect is just uh, providing connectors between connected boxes. Um, you have your pen tool, so you can kind of start drawing vector-based elements. Um, zooming in and out, um, this is... I, but very rarely ever click on this. Um, I, I use a lot of quick keys. So uh, to zoom in and out of the page, I would use the control bar. And I actually am one of those designers that uses a mouse, and it's actually a mouse, Microsoft mouse, even though I work on a Mac. Um, but I actually use the control scroll, and that will scroll in and out. And it's actually really handy because I can scroll into particular areas of the page that I want. Um, some people use their uh, touchpad, then they can kind of zoom in and um, do that. 
The other option is the control plus and minus, which zooms in and out at set increments. Um, so it's really up to your preference. Um, and then for scrolling, I actually use the shift key to scroll side to side with the mouse. So as I scroll back and forth, it goes side to side. And then uh, up and down without the shift key, it just goes up and down. So control, shift, I, I, I use a combination of those to move around the page. Um, but again, it's all your preference and how you want to do it. Front and back, this is just based on the elements that you have selected. Um, we'll just bring those elements forward and back. So I can bring it to the, the back of the page, to the front of the page. Those are just kind of quick things that you can use. You can group elements, you can align them. So if I were to, you know, duplicate this and then, you know, move it up above, I can align these elements uh, to the top, to the left. Um, and it's a quick way to sort of keep things uh, symmetrical and in line. You can also distribute. So if there, there's multiple items uh, that you're working with, let's say I create four of these on the page and I'm duplicating it by using the um, option and shift. Shift allows me to keep it in line left and right. And then the option key allows me to duplicate it. So here I have all four of these elements. I want to distribute them um, horizontally and then it just kind of adjusts it. So if this one was way over here and then I distribute horizontally, it then just kind of equally distributes them across the page. And again, these are all things that as you start working with the system and doing them, it just becomes second nature. Um, left and right here, this, uh, oh, actually, you're also able to lock certain layers so that if I hit lock here, I'm not able to actually even move that. So you can see it's red, um, and then I can unlock it. Uh, so that's good if you want that in a set position. You don't want to change. You don't want to modify the, you know, position or the size. Um, that's pretty easy. Left and right are really just the panels, so I'm going to hide the left panel here or the right inspector panel there, um, and that's pretty much the, you know, if you're needing more space as you're starting to design the pages. Um, a lot of these other things are more based on fonts, so here I can change the fonts, um, you know, color formatting, I can... Um, if I wanted this to be centered or left justification, I can also align it. Uh, alignment is really good if you have boxes. So um, in boxes, you can instantly just type in text um, and then you can put it to the top or to the bottom. And then the padding in the right hand side here really helps you identify, you know, um, how much padding it is to the top or bottom. So. This is really helpful when you have text in boxes. Um, some design systems like Sketch, you're not actually able to type into uh, boxes. You have to actually add text on top of boxes. So here I would have to just throw a, a text on here. And then if I wanted that to line to the bottom, um, you know, I would have to do something like this. So um, that's a few things on the top toolbar. Um, the next section is the pages. So here I can easily add a page um, just by using the icon here or I can right click on the page itself and add pages after or before. Um, this is really a way to build out a hierarchy. So um, if I added a folder, this is um, where you can have pages and you can drag and drop these. Um, a page can have a sub page or a folder directly has um, sub pages underneath it. Um, you can, you know, um, go as many levels deep as you want. I'm not sure if there's a max uh, behind it. I haven't actually tested that. But um, as you go to new, create new pages, um, you can just double click to get to those pages. You can click on it, rename it, um, and it's, it's pretty simple. Um, the next one is libraries. So libraries, as you saw, I can easily just drag in uh, different elements. So here, um, if I wanted to build a header, um, I can just you know start designing. Um, there's things like images, and with images here, this is a um, you double click on it, and then you can then um, 
add in an image and then there you go. There's an image. Um, Sketch is a little bit better for vector-based elements. I think in uh, Axure, the latest Axure here, you can bring in um, SVG or uh, other vector-based elements. There is down under icons, um, there are vector-based uh, icons here that come predefined. So if I wanted to find a search icon, there's things like that that I can drag and drop. Um, and then I can easily recolor those, um, which is nice. So the other thing with vector base is you can make them as large or as small and they'll output like that and uh, without losing the quality. So going back to some of the other things under libraries, um, if I were to show the all libraries, there's just common things like paragraphs is, are nice because it comes predefined with some lorem ipsum. Um, and, you know, I can easily just change the text size here, um, resize it. Uh, there's some other elements like dynamic panels we'll get to in some other sessions, which allow you to do a lot more interactivity. So they have a lot more um, uh, interactive uh, interactions. So tech, like this text box only has on click, mouse of, uh, enter, and mouse out where by default, the dynamic panels has a lot more. Um, there's a lot of form elements, text fields, and these are all interactive, so you can make it disabled, you can you know, um, do a lot of different things because it is, uh, a, extra is very um, meant for prototyping. So some of the things like check boxes, you can you know, actually click on it and um, it'll display like that and be interactive so you could if on uh, if if selected it would you know do a particular action um, so there's a lot of interactivity things like tables are very easy in Axure. you can just drag and drop a table and you know add columns uh, so it's pretty simple there menus and then you start getting into um, some of these other objects so uh, the one uh, the next section is really around masters. So masters are really, really helpful when, when you're building out um, things like headers or footers and you wanted to, let's say this is the logo. And let's say I wanted to make this a consistent header across this other, uh, all these pages. So maybe we'll just make it all other pages. So what I would do is I select all that I want as part of that master, and then I would right click and then convert to master. And I would rename it. Now here you have the ability to either lock it to a particular master location or place it anywhere on the page. Because it is something that is consistent, normally like a header, um, you would just lock to a specific lock, uh, master location. Footers, they may vary in height, so you may um, put it anywhere you want. Here I'm gonna lock it to a specific location. So now if I were to go to this other page and then just drag and drop um, the master, even if I dropped it anywhere on the page, it's gonna bring it to that original location. Um, I'll go to this next page, drag and drop. The, the, and again, the nicest thing about headers is if I were to go in here and uh, our masters, if I go in here and change anything, um, add in you know, buttons or whatever, now when I go back to all those other pages, you'll see it's always there. Um, so that's the, the benefit of uh, the masters is you can make a change once and it'll apply to all your different pages that you have those masters. And again, you can have multiple masters um, uh, within the pages. In the right hand side is the inspector. This is inspector under properties is really um, based on your interactions. So here um, I can have an interaction maybe in the header so that anytime this button is pressed um, you can have like an on click event or you have a shortcut which is create link. So this instantly creates a, a link to any particular page. So let's say anytime I click on this button, it's gonna bring me to this new page one. 
Um, so I can test that by just going to preview, publish preview. It'll open up my browser. Um, and then when I go to my any one of these pages, I click on button, it's gonna bring me to that new page. Um, and again, I can do this anytime I go to any of these because it's in the master, it'll always just bring me to that new page. So um, other than the interactions, um, some of the other cool things that you can do within the interactions, like if this is selected, um, I can do custom actions so that maybe, um, if I were to name this, if I selected this, I could move image one, let's say 50 pixels to the right. So if I go back to preview, and every time I click this, it just keeps moving it to the right. And again, this is very simple, but um, there's a ton of other actions um, that you can do. Uh, so it could be on uh, hover, it could be on click, it could be on swipe. Uh, there's many different actions. And you can see under here, there's all these different events. So based on keyboard, um, based on you know, um, loading the page, there's certain actions that can happen. Notes, I don't use notes that often, or if at all. Um, this is kind of just a way to kind of add notes to the page. Um, so when you uh, produce an output, you can uh, see those notes. The style, this is really about, um, you can either use the styles up here, or there's styling around padding and positioning and all that kind of stuff, which allows you to see the location. You have that up here, but just additional uh, formatting. Um, and again, you can change here all the different um, standard uh, styles. So you can define these so that as you build out more pages, you can use these consistent styles here. And the last one is really just the layers. So here um, I can move these layers around. I can move them uh, up and down. Um, I don't use layers a huge amount. Um, a lot of the times I'll just move things forward and back. Um, but it is a good way to kind of, um, if you have dynamic panels, dive deep into those. You can see here, this is a dynamic panel. Um, and within each dynamic panel, they have different states. So yeah, you're going to be using this a lot um, to really just navigate between the pages. So that's kind of like a first look at Axure and sort of the core components. Um, in the next sessions, we'll really dive deep into, you know, building more complex uh, prototypes. And uh, I hope this, hope you enjoyed the session and I'll see you.